Hi, let me introduce myself. My name is Eduardo de Fracasso Fleury, and I like to share my experience regarding breast implants and their complications. And today I'm going to talk about why we have the breast implant illness. Our presentation is based on our research of five years, and it's based on our theory, and the concrete theory is welcome for discussion. At the beginning of our protocol, we saw that many patients have the same complaints regarding the breast implants, most of them local, like edema of the breast or enlargement of the breast and skin involvement. And some of them have some systemic symptoms like colitis, arthritis, and brain fog. When correlating the findings of the clinical complaints with the MRI findings, we found some same features of the MRI that can make the diagnosis of gel bleeding. And despite the integrity of the implants in the macroscopy, when we do we perform the microscopy of the implants, we can see the shedding and gel bleeding here, especially on the right implant where there is the biggest seroma. And we described three features to diagnose the gel bleeding by MRI. To understand what happens with our immune response, we need to know what kind of cells we have in the blood, and especially for the defense, we have the monocyte and the lymphocyte that's going to play a role in the breast implant illness in our theory. So the inflammation process is going to depend on the macrophage activation and the monocyte is going to be transformed in macrophage. And the macrophage is going to phagocyte the silicon particle and it's going to make a complex here. And here we have the FUMI macrophage and this is the key to diagnose the breast implant illness. This is going to activate the T cell and the T cell is going to have the mitosis here and the mitosis is going to, to play a role against the silicone foreign body here. And this process has a, a beginning and an end. So here, there is the beginning of the process. We have an peak and we have the resolution of the inflammation. Most often it occurs like that. And we can act here to reduce the inflammation of this process. It's important to understand that the lymphocyte here became from a stem cell that's going to be differentiated in a more specialized one. And when you have a consumption of this T lymphocyte here, probably we are going to recruit some younger cells like that. And here you're going to have a typical cells on the histology or cytology. This manuscript we use to understand what happens with the dissemination of the silicon inside the body. So the authors, they report to patients that donate their body to the, to, to the research. They used to have the symptoms of breast implant illness and we can see some silicon on distant organs and here is reported most of the places that we have the silicon. So when we put the implant in the patient, the implant is inert and we're going to have this fibro capsule that's going to protect the body against the, the foreign body here. After that, we have a deterioration of the implant and with the shell bleeding, as you can see here, so the gel bleeding is going to be in contact with the fibrous capsule and it's going to activate the macrophage here and the macrophage is going to activate the lymphocyte and at this time we're going to have the granuloma formation here in the fibrous capsule and we're going to have an inflammatory process here mediated by the, mediated by the macrophage. So in this time, we're going to have a capsule contracture. But as is self-limiting the process, 
there's one time that the macrophage is not going to activate again and this is going to have a scar here here you can see a giant cell with silicone inside of it and here the patient's not going to have more complaints but we are going to still have the bleeding of the implant and after a time the bleeding is going to, to go to the lymph node and to the rest of the body as we saw in the manuscript but when we have a, a new inflammation here inside the capsule we are going to have this stimuli of the lymphocytes T and the T cell is going to act against all of the silicon in the body so we are going to have target organs reaction and here you are going to have target complaints of the silicon when we have the inflammation it's going to be self-limiting again and you're going to have more scar in the granuloma inside of the fibro capsule and here is the correlation of the breast MRI and the granuloma so we can see some specific findings at the breast MRI that we can infer that there is gel bleeding and perform the diagnosis of the breast implant illness and this is the, the, the histology of the lesion you can find here the giant cell and lymphocytes and fibrosis so we have the correlation of the histology and the breast MRI sometimes we can have a dysfunction of the negative regulation of the t-cell here so we're going to recruit we have more mit mitosis and we're going to recruit more young cells and here they are atypical and here we, is what we think that we have the breast uh, implant associated not plastic lar large cell lymphoma so we think they have the same ori origin the SIGBIC and the BIALCL and the breast implant illness. This study corroborates with our findings. They describe the spontaneous regression and resolution of the breast implant BIALCL. And here, in, at the time of the diagnosis and the acute phase of the inflammatory process, we can see some lymphocytes, atypical lymphocytes and one month later we have less lymphocytes here with less CD30 positive and at the time of the surgery there is only few normal lymphocytes and at the histology there is possible to see some uh, silicone inside the fibro capsule so it's just like the same of our findings so when we perform the end block capsulectomy and we take away all of the capsule, the disease capsule and the implant, probably we're going to interrupt the gel bleeding and we're not going to have more degenerator of the sick of the patients that it's the gel bleeding from here. So the patient is going to still have the silicone in, probably if the, it migrated to the, to the organs, but the, she's not going to have again the new inflammatory process inside the capsule so she's not going to have an activation of the lymphocytes and to have target uh, complaints regarding the breast implant we described uh, our findings in this blog cbic.org and it's available the information of our research there we also have published many manuscripts regarding the, the issue. We can find just typing Eduardo de Fracasto Fleury at PubMed. Yeah, and there are a lot of data available there. And we also wrote a book telling all of the stories regarding my research. It's very interesting and it's available at Amazon.com. Thank you.